I'll talk about uh, topological modeling of human machine teams. Um, and this is uh, work that I've done here at IDA along with Caitlin Feeling, who's, who, uh, who has uh, done a great job running the computers today, and uh, also John Heyman, uh, also here at IDA. So just to start with, um, our basic thesis is that um, uh, it's, it's really twofold. Modeling teams has historically been difficult, especially teams with any kind of human component, because human behavior is very unpredictable, adds a lot of layers of complexity and unpredictability uh, in a modeling simulation situation. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, I'm getting over a cold myself, so um, not contagious, I promise. But, um, but uh, yeah, so if I clear my throat or cough a little bit, uh, I apologize. Um, so. We are proposing uh, a framework for modeling team, uh, human machine teams. Uh, this would apply to other teams as well, but, 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 but we have ideas about applying it to human machine teams. Uh, 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 using team topology or shape as a basis. Our other, hi, sorry, our other main thesis here is that every team, every structure really has a shape. And uh, a, a topology is the general mathematical study of shape, uh, even more so than geometry is. Um, <coughs> And so we propose using that team shape and, uh, 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 and how the team agents interact with each other as a basis for modeling human machine teams. So we're going to talk uh, uh, a little bit at the beginning here uh, about what a human machine team is according to our definition, uh, uh, some work we've done in the past on this, and then we'll get into a couple of very simple examples. I don't want to get too, too, uh, uh, too complex today, um, uh, uh, but I'll be happy to answer questions afterwards uh, if, you want, if you want to know more details. So. Uh, going forward, um, a human machine team for our purposes is, <clears throat> sorry, is a group of agents consisting of at least one human, at least one machine, uh, working collaboratively towards towards a common objective or goal. Uh, and working collaboratively, sorry, working collaboratively, there is a key point because we're because we're assuming our machine uh, agents in our teams are not are not just tools being operated by the humans. They they have some ability to make decisions and, uh, and otherwise cause some impetus to action on the part of other teammates. Uh, and, some, and some examples there that have already been touched on in other talks today, uh, a pilot aircraft team, and we, we saw the loyal wingman example earlier, um, uh, uh, self-driving cars, uh, search and rescue drones. Uh, uh, drones are obviously a big, uh, a big component of a uh, 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 future, sorry, future HMT scenarios. Um, <coughs> uh, and in fact, some of the simulation work we've done, uh, some of the modeling simulation work we've done has been, uh, has been centered around um, human machine teams uh, 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 and, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, involved in search and rescue scenarios. So um, then what we mean by topological model? So this is just, uh, very roughly speaking, a predictive framework for analyzing how team organization, structure, and interaction affect performance. So, so our objective here is, uh, is very T&E focused. We, we are interested in, uh, in measuring how teams perform uh, 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 in certain circumstances, uh, given certain tasks and mission to complete. And so a topological model is just a set of information, uh, equations, parameters, variables, all the other things that go into that. Sorry. OK. Oh, is that better? OK. OK, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, <coughs> All those factors that are, that can affect team performance, and so we're ultimately trying to measure team performance. And uh, and traditionally, um, uh, measuring team performance, uh, uh, whether the team has been largely human, sorry, or human, sorry, or human and machine composed, uh, has focused on just uh, on just individual agent metrics, uh, measuring certain parameters for each individual agent in the team. And then taking, uh, and then taking various means or aggregations of those values, um, but 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 our basic idea here is that a team, uh, a, a, an effective team, should be more than just the sum of its parts. <coughs> Sorry, and then topological models um, uh, provide a uh, provide a groundwork for taking that sort of complex systems approach. So I should back up a little bit. So, so when we say a team should be more than some of its parts, we are, we are assuming there that a team is, or, or that we're looking at a team as a complex system, one that has emergent properties that cannot be measured by looking at any one individual or subset of the individuals on the team, human or otherwise. Um, and so topological models, we think, provide a framework for actually analyzing that, 
uh, for actually analyzing the performance in a more effective way because, because you, can in, uh, you can include all the individual agent metrics that you might have studied before. Um, uh, mean time on task, for instance, if you're, uh, depending, on what the, uh, depending on what the mission might be. But, 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 but you can also account for now how the team agents interact with each other, right? And then how they interact with each other is what, is what forms that underlying team structure, how the team actually looks. If you were to plot the team on a graph, how that team looks, what its underlying architecture is, that interaction we think really affects team performance. And so we are providing a framework here for, for actually including those measurements in an assessment of team performance. <clears throat> okay. Now, these models can do more than just provide an assessment of team performance, right? They can, <coughs> excuse me, they can also provide a framework for optimizing team performance, or, or at least optimizing within, within, the, uh, 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 within any constraints that might be uh, imposed on the system. So, so we can actually physically locate weak points in a team. A weak point could be, could be an agent not pulling his weight. Uh, it could be a group of agents not pulling their weight. It could, be, it, could be a, it could be any number of things that are causing that team to perform at a level less than what is required or what is expected. And, and topological models, because they are sort of, um, for lack of a better word, geographically uh, built up of, uh, of underlying principles, they, they can allow us to find weak points and actually strong points too. find points in the team where where uh, uh, or you are getting, <coughs> excuse me, where you are getting less performance out of an individual or, or at a set of individuals. When I say individual, I mean uh, uh, machines as well. So we need any. Uh, sorry, any one or more agents in the team, human or otherwise. <coughs> so, so we built this sort of circular framework here um, uh, as part of uh, as part of our T and E as part of our T and E applications for topological models uh, of HMTs. Um, and and this and I'm going to talk about this in just a second on the next slide too. This is really uh, a, a, a follow up of, of work we did in the past on. On, uh, on building a framework of metrics for uh, uh, for assessing human machine team performance, um, so so in fact uh, I'm actually going to go on to that next because I want to talk about that. So 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 this is uh, has been a long term ongoing project here at IDA uh, modeling human machine teams, and, and the first part of this, um, which we finished uh, 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 about a year ago, uh, was a study on. Not so much individual metrics, but actually groups and families of metrics for, for assessing human machine team performance. Um, <coughs> and what we ended up doing was we split those metrics into, into three broad categories based on, based on the team's capability, the team interaction, and the team performance. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. And uh, we expect a team's topology or a team shape or its underlying structure. Uh, 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 to overlap with the metrics uh, that, that, uh, that inform both capability and interaction. In fact, we take team interaction in most of our simulations, in fact, all of them so far, uh, we take team interaction as the basis for building up a team's underlying structure. Um, uh, and, <coughs> and our simulations have shown that a team's performance can be affected by that structure. We, we actually have simulations. I'm not going to talk about them here because they're a little more uh, time-consuming. But, but, but we've actually carried out simulations where we've seen teams of the same composition, the same number of humans, same number of machines uh, assigned to the same task, and uh, teams, who, uh, teams whose interaction was, uh, 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 was restricted more than another team. Um, it, <coughs> sorry, and the results of the simulation come out to show that the team that interacts when it's allowed to interact more in that case um, actually performs better, uh, even though their more traditional metrics like time on task, for instance, um, came out comparable to the other team. So, uh, uh, so topology can in fact uh, affect human machine team performance and, uh, 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 and team performance in general. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I want to get in now to our to our uh, to our examples, and I'm going to start with a very simple one. Right, like I said, these are going to be simple examples we talk about today. Um, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. So we're talking about a self-driving car. All right, so this team consists of just one human and one machine. Uh, and the team's mission or task is just to navigate a course. Uh, and the result uh, of this basic test here 
is a crash when the vehicle attempts to keep moving at a certain point when the driver tries to manually apply the brakes. And we've broken our test data here down into just very visual, verbal, in fact, uh, a parameter. So, so we're not looking at any, any numerical data here, but we broke our, data, our test data down into our three, into our three metric categories, cap capability, interaction, and performance. And, and you can see that the performance um, for this test, obviously, from the scenario I described, was poor. Uh, and it's because, uh, so the task performance was poor, and that's because the collective decision making was, w w w uh, 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 was also poor. And what, and what caused that in this basic simulation is that the communication structure broke down. So what happened here in this, in this basic simulation was that the human could, uh, could, was that the human could communicate with the car, but the car could not send any information back to the human. So we, uh, so we ended up with just a one-way communication structure for this team, right? Just a line segment, a directed line segment from the human to the machine. However, if we, if we repair that and we allow the car to then communicate back to the human, okay, that's, that, that's a very simple concept. It seems obvious. It seems trivial. But, but what that does is it adds another structure to the underlying team's shape, right? So, so you add that extra line of communication back from the car to the human, uh, and now you have a circle instead of a line segment. A circle is, is fundamentally a different shape from a line segment. They have different topological parameters, different topological structures. You can, you can, you can indicate their topology being different in any number of ways using mathematics I won't go into here. But, but the point is that if you fix that interface and you allow the car to communicate back with the human, right? So now you have this, uh, uh, now you have this feedback loop, right? Now you have a circular topological structure uh, describing how this team functions, how this team interacts with, how this team interacts. <coughs> that simple topological change, however simple it might be, leads to better performance, right? So that's a very simple example, simple illustration of what we're talking about here is how a team's structure, how a team's underlying architecture uh, and how the team agents interact with each other, how all of those factors together can affect team performance. Um, here's, here's another example, a little more involved. Uh, so this is, this is keeping with our, uh, this is keeping with our defense purposes here at IDA. So, so here we took a, um, a reconnaissance drone swarm example, right? So we have four human operators here, each one, uh, I don't like to say controlling, but because I like to think of the, uh, of the machine agents as being, as being independent agents themselves and it can make decisions, cause impetus to action, all, all of those things. So we have four humans here who are, uh, each of whom is working with five different reconnaissance drones, all right? Uh, and the drones are all assigned to cover a particular sector of area, uh, a particular sector of terrain. <coughs> and the drones are, are observing or making adversarial detect, so, uh, sorry, they're making adversarial detections within their particular sector uh, of, of observation. Uh, and they are relaying those observations back to the humans and the humans are then making decisions on whether or not to relay those back to, to a commander. The commander's not really part of this team here, uh, but uh, uh, there are any number of ways you could change the structure, obviously. But, but, but the point is that the drones are relaying information back to the humans. The humans are then relaying that information back to a command post. Uh, and so that's our, our reconnaissance drone swarm team here. <coughs> Excuse me. So we are assessing interaction here in a very simple and coarse way. All right, there are many different ways you can measure team interaction between, between agents. You could, you could only count certain types of interactions, certain types of information flow from one agent to another. Um, uh, it could be actual material passing from one agent to another. Here, uh, uh, we simply measure communication, right? So, so if a drone relayed information back to, his, uh, back to the drone's human, we, we, we counted that as an interaction. If the human then sent information to, uh, to, one of his, to one of his drones, we count that as an interaction. So we're just taking basic, uh, uh, basic information flow here as our means of assessing interaction. And, and we just counted the interaction. So, so the numbers on the graph here, so this is a network version of the picture I just showed you, obviously, with the blue dots representing the humans and the red dots representing the drones. And the numbers on each line segment indicate how many times that pair of agents interacted with each other. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And here's our performance data. So we measure performance here in a, in a couple of different ways. What, what one of the main ways though was what, uh, uh, sorry, two of the main ways though was the percentage of sector covered. So we didn't expect because of time constraints for each drone to cover 
uh, all of its particular area that it was assigned to. Uh, uh, so we measured how, how much of each sector uh, a drone was allowed to cover during, uh, during the time period, and then how many adversarial detections were made, and then how many of those detections uh, that were laid back to the human were actually were laid back to the commander. So the human's making some decisions here too, obviously, about, about whether or not it trusts the drone's information that's being fed back to it, sorry. So, uh, so, uh, so the values in this table here, um, I split them up so that H1, H2, H3, and H4 indicate the four humans, and, and then D11, for instance, represents drone number one assigned to human one, D12 is drone number two assigned to human one, D23, for instance, is drone number two assigned to human, I'm oh, sorry, drone number three assigned to human two, so, so there's just the drones assigned to each human, and you can see the percentage of sector covered and the number of adversarial detections made and the number of ones relayed as well. Uh, the, the number of uh, detections relayed is, uh, is, not quite as, uh, is not quite as significant here as the other two variables. Um, <coughs> so that's a relatively okay performance, right? We have, we have generally large uh, areas of sectors covered there, um, relatively good numbers of adversarial detections, however you want to measure that. Um, however, if we change our team structure a little bit, Right, so, so, so if I can back up one little bit, right, so you see that the humans there are organized in such a way that they're basically three subordinates uh, all answering to one sort of, uh, <coughs> sorry, to one, uh, 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 to one human commander. And, and here we're going to change that slightly to where now all four humans can interact with each other. Um, and, and what's not shown in, in this picture is that is that we're um, is that we're actually now allowing these humans to interact, not just pairwise, right? So so um, so what I mean by that is uh, it, uh, 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 we're going beyond just classical network models of teams here. Network models of teams is is not a new subject; it's very old. Uh, there's been a lot of applications for it. Uh, network models of teams. Uh, is a specific case of topological models where, where you restrict the dimension of the model to one, the topological dimension. Here, we're actually allowing these four humans to interact as a group, as if they were four people sitting around a conference table chatting it up together and controlling their drones from there. Okay. okay, so what you don't see in this picture, right, what you do see is that all four humans are now connected to each other. But what that does is it forms a tetrahedron, right, a four-sided shape or a four-cornered figure, uh, it, uh, I think of it as a three-dimensional triangle, uh, but but we're considering that to be a solid tetrahedron here, right? So, so that's a topological shape that indicates those four agents in the team are acting. <coughs> sorry, they're uh, they are interacting together, not just not just in a pairwise fashion where I'm going to communicate to you, you might communicate to her, and she might send it back to him, and he might send it back to me. Now that we're actually sitting around as a group working together, right? So that's the that's the type of richer, more dynamic, uh, more human-like interaction that you can measure with topological models that you cannot get out of more classical team models, in, in particular network models and, either, and, uh, and, and more dimension-restricted stochastic models, for instance, right? Topological models, because they allow this higher dimensional interaction, that's what gives you this more realistic type of structure <coughs> or that's indicative of how people and hopefully machines eventually will actually interact. And, and when we make that change here, all right, so, we, so we change the shape of the team to allow all four humans to interact as a group now, as a subgroup. Now you see, so, so I've highlighted this in yellow, the percentage of sector observed values, uh, all of those went up. Uh, the number of adversarial detections went up uh, for, uh, for most of the drones. And, and what also went up was the number of adversarial detections relayed by each human back to the commander. Uh, so that's an indication that the human is now trusting the information the drones are sending back more, and that's a consequence, out of, in our simulation at least, of the fact that the humans are working together. So they now trust the entire system as a whole more than they did fundamentally beforehand. <clears throat> and, so, and so what you might take out of this is an operational testing solution that that if you have the resources for it, all four humans obviously should interact more in this team as opposed to acting as just as just one commander with three subordinates that only answer back to him or her. Uh, uh, because when all four interact and they're sharing information together as a subgroup of the team, the performance increases dramatically. <coughs>
Now, I should also add that, that optimization, of course, uh, in realistic terms, uh, comes with constraints, right? Uh, you, you, you might not have enough resources to allow all four humans to interact together as a subgroup. Um, but, but as I mentioned before, that's another advantage of topological models is that they can pinpoint, um, I should better say estimate, right? You can pinpoint in some cases, most of the time what you're going to be doing is estimating. Estimate points in the team or regions within the team where you might have the most need for an extra line of communication, for an extra subgroup of, of the team interacting together to work towards, uh, to work towards some common sub-goal that's, that's part of the overall larger goal. Right, so you can actually find out where where those individual components are needed uh, within the team structure. <clears throat> okay, right, and uh, that's actually what I just went through there. So, going on, let me finish up now. So, I just want to say through, uh, uh, a, a few things to draw this to a close here. So, so I've mentioned before, topological modeling can be a way to not just assess team performance of human machine teams, uh, but also a, a to optimize performance in the face of constraints and resource constraints. Um, <coughs> we currently do not collect uh, any real interaction data when we do tests and evaluations of, of platforms, uh, 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 technologies. Um, uh, each service has its, uh, sorry, each service's lab actually has, has a subgroup devoted to, uh, uh, to modeling and uh, testing teams. Um, I know at ARL where I used to work, uh, the Army HRED division up, up at Aberdeen uh, does a lot of team modeling. Uh, 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 but they're still not collecting team, team data that we might need for this type of model here. So, so this is a very forward-thinking research idea. We are proposing, uh, or we are hoping rather, to get more data. We, we're working with people in the Army specifically to try to get more team-based data, uh, more team interaction data. <laughs> <clears throat> so we can test some of these models on larger scales. We, we've run basic uh, search and rescue scenarios, um, and, uh, and, and, we've, and, and we did the drone reconnaissance scenario, uh, but, uh, uh, but those are relatively simple to model. We actually need more data to model more complex scenarios that you might find in, a, in other defense situations. Um, I also want to say that this is... Um, not so much a replacement of traditional team models um, as it is an additional tool in the toolbox. I mean, what we're really uh, proposing here is adding an additional set of predictors uh, and doing regression models. I mean, I mean, that's really what this boils down to. But with those predictors, we propose as being as being the the more fundamental as being the more fundamental ones uh, from this point forward, because because like we said, the individual agent metrics that have been measured for teams up to this point. Uh, they are useful. Uh, 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 no one's denying that, but they don't give you a full picture. You can't measure a team's collective performance by looking at each individual agent and how fast they did their task, for instance. Right. So, so how the team interacts, how that team self-organizes in response to a task, all of those factors affect team performance. All the simulations we've run show that. Um, <coughs> and so we're proposing that as a framework now. Uh, from modeling human machine teams going forward. And like I said, this could apply to any team really. Where we think this method is going to shine though is in teams that have a very large machine component, okay? Um, small teams of like two, three, four, five agents, topological modeling is really gonna be overkill uh, for, uh, uh, for scenarios like that. <coughs> Sorry, uh, classical network modeling works equally well in those situations. Um, where this method is going to shine is when the team complexity increases. Uh, in fact, that's how you measure uh, the effectiveness of these models is by using different measures of, uh, uh, we call them entropy, but they're really measures of team complexity. Um, and so, uh, so when that team complexity in increases, when you have more agents uh, more intricately aligned and organized and interacting with each other, um, more subgroups of the team working working together on separate tasks, but also interacting with each other. When you have that more complicated structure, that's where topological models are really going to shine above any other type of uh, modeling framework. Um, so, uh, yes, so so, uh, 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 so we foresee this being very useful in the case of things like drone swarms. Um, uh, 
sorry, on a smaller scale, actually, um, nanobot swarms. I know there's uh, us some research today, RL, <coughs> um, focusing on um, on uh, on uh, robot drones at the micro and nano scale level. Um, uh, and, and so even swarms of those types of objects, uh, along with human operators, th those could be uh, 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 those could be targets of a modeling framework like this. So, um, I will I will stop there, and then ask if there are any questions or or. or Jay, anyone. thank you so much. Sure. Um, and there is one comment in the the chat. Um, I. I see that it's there humorously, but I'm going to pivot off it to a different question. I would like to ask if you and Tyler and the rest of the panel are willing to stay for a few more minutes into this lunchtime to field more questions. Sure, um, I am, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so th the comment in the chat, uh, correctly, UJ, is are you concerned that your framework will not be able to distinguish between donut-shaped and coffee cup-shaped teams? Um, <laughs> with, um, and 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 I, I see that that is humorous. And I want to pivot from that. Um, I've seen... Uh, team analysis, not topological, but other interaction analysis in the cockpit. And I know the cockpit is a pretty constrained environment. People can't yeah. move very far away from each other. There's defined roles of fixed number of people, but I've seen a lot of variability in that. So how does your framework deal with this variability in teams, even when the number of people in the relationship between them is predefined? Over. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so the first question, uh, topologically, there's no difference between, uh, between a coffee cup and a donut, so so we, may, so we need to make that distinction. Um, a geometer would, but but a topologist would not. Um, as for the second question, uh, for that specific example you mentioned, uh, I would not advocate using this modeling framework for something like a like a human systems integration problem uh, between a pilot and a cockpit, for instance. That's uh, 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 with just a two-agent team like that, um, the the, uh, the primary focus in that human machine team should uh, uh, should be the human system interaction uh, variables, all the things that go into uh, how the human and machine pass information to each other, how they react to that information. The structure of the team is not really, in fact, it's 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 trivial. I mean, I mean, there's no real benefit to knowing any sort of underlying structure of that team because because it's obvious it's just a two agent team connected as let a me line let me elaborate system. slightly Jay. okay uh, sorry i may have been unclear um i saw that in crew cockpit environments where you have three or more people involved okay okay so you you have multiple people and and the the thing that i saw that was interesting is you get very different performance out of those teams depending on how they communicate with each other that you can have teams with the same number of people in the exact same roles with the same capability of communicating between them each other that perform very poorly because they do that communication badly or yeah. because an individual in that team yes. uh, doesn't work effectively in that team over yes, yes. so um uh, 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 so i think the answer there uh would take me into some of the more specific topological metrics so, so i did not get into in, the, in this short talk uh some of the more interesting topological parameters and metrics that you would use to assess how a team's uh, how a team is structured, how a team is interacting, is uh, and so forth. Uh, but there are variables um, uh, like 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 uh, like clustering and embeddedness. Again, I can explain those if anyone wants to hear them. But but there are measures that can assess how well a certain agent, for instance, or a subgroup of agents, is interacting with the rest of the team. Okay, so so uh, so so you can uh, you can literally numerically measure. Uh, so as long as you can measure interaction in some way, you uh, you can then specify or 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 locate uh, which agent or agents is uh, is uh, might be passing bad information, passing no information. Right, that agent might be in a strategic point of the team w where it needs to pull more weight, but it's not. All those um, negative aspects of interaction, you uh, uh, you can find or locate through actually measuring some of these t different topological metrics and parameters. So uh, is that is that more of uh, uh, what you were asking? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, Caitlin, are there any questions from the room? 